Hi there, my name is Dina Falcone. I'm an herbalist educator, the author of Foraging and Feasting and Earthly Bodies and Heavenly Hair. And who is in our midst at this very moment in this mid late November moment here in the mid Hudson Valley of New York? We have our friend, oyster mushroom. This is Pleurotus austriatus of the Pleurotaceae family. And we have here a gourmet, delicious, delectable, edible, and medicinal. How do you cook this? Just the way you cook any old mushroom, really? Bake it, saute it uh, with good olive oil or some butter, perhaps some salt, maybe herbs and spices. But even just with some kind of fat and some salt, you've got an amazing, delectable treat right here. Um, medicinally, it's used to support immune system health, which means it's going to help keep diseases at bay, even cancer. Um, there's lots of medicinal literature on this, but really my focus is on using this as a food that boosts our health, so food as medicine. Pleurotus austriatus is a saprobic mushroom that likes to grow on dead or decaying wood. Saprobic means that it, it basically breaks down organic matter and you are seeing the beauty of this growing on an ash. This is a dead ash tree and there's different size oyster mushrooms emerging out of this ash tree and it's nice for you to see that. You can see that really beautiful nice one and then there's these clusters right above it. Here's an example of beautiful pretty young emerging oyster mushrooms forming clusters. They grow in shelf-like clusters. Sometimes they won't be in clusters, but they'll be solitary, as we see in this bigger one right below. Let's look underneath. Underneath you can see that it has these gills that radiate out from this center point, which is a nubby, nubby-like stalk. It's really not much of a stalk at all. And these gills, if you were to use a magnifier, you would see that they are not forked, meaning they are not serrated at their margin, at the edge. This is also a white color. You can kind of see a whiteness here, right? It's not really yellow or dingy colored. It's, it's pretty white. And also, from this angle, you can also see this shape pretty nicely. We have a oyster-like shape, perhaps a fan shape or a kidney shape. So the caps are in that formation. Let's pick this cluster for you to get a macro idea on. Here we've picked from very young to old oyster mushrooms so you can see their development. We've just picked them from the ash tree that you were with me at and here we go. So here are the babies and these are newly emerged and now here they develop to look like this and then this is the next stage and then it moves on to this. And you can see the color of the cap shifts in our specimens here. We have a grayish it's even a, a slightly darker gray to lighter gray as we progress through maturity to really this isn't really gray it's more beige at this point so you can see the cap color shifts and I also want you to notice I'm going to flip them so you can see underneath out, let, before I flip them I want to just say that at this stage this is pretty much past picking meaning it's not really useful for food you certainly can go sprinkle this about in your woodlands if you want to encourage the spores here is pretty perfect for eating and and these as well these are all tasty i probably wouldn't pick this size if i knew that it would have a chance to grow bigger but i did just for, so i can educate you right now but let's turn them over so you can see what's happening underneath as well and here you can see the spore i'm um, sorry the gills really flowing down from this um stalk here this stipe which is, if you looked closely with a magnifier, you'd see that it's a bit fuzzy. It's a nubby little stem here. And let's flip this one over so you can see what this looks like. Once, by the way, the gills 
get older, you can see that they do discolor and become a kind of a yellowish, a sort of a, a funky white. And let's flip over these babies and you can see that. And then these teenies. And it's interesting that on the teenies, you can actually see the, the uh, stem, the stipe more distinctly. Often that's not there. Like, it, it, for example, with this cluster, that stipe pretty, is pretty, pretty minimal. Um, okay, and then you can also see, just again, repeat the shape. We have an oyster-like or a fan-like or kidney-like uh, cap. And we have these radiating, these gills that radiate out from that stubby nub of a stalk. And what else to say? The spore print. You want to make sure that you take a spore print and that the spore print is white to very pale lilac gray. So that's pretty important. The flesh should be white. So when you break it open, you should see a white flesh. And also, the flesh does not discolor. It does not change color when you break it. The cap size is from one inch to six plus inches. So let's just quickly review. Where are you gonna find this mushroom? What season? It's cold, it's a cold weather mushroom, so you're gonna look for it from October, cold October through April. Where is it in the world? It is all over the world. So you're gonna find it throughout the United States, in Europe, in Asia. It is also a mushroom whose substrate is typically hardwood, dead hardwood. This is an ash we're with, so, but it also likes various other hardwoods. Occasionally it does grow on conifers. I've not seen that though. And in my area here, it's mostly preferring the dead ashes. Um, so you've got substrate, also for ID clues, make sure you do that spore print and that you see that it's a white to very pale lilac gray. So the spore print's pretty critical here. Another thing which we didn't really touch upon, but we should, is that its smell is kind of oystery. <laughs> it's kind of fishy. It's kind of sometimes actually though, it's kind of anisey. This particular day, these do not smell very anisey and the flavor is mild. It's a sort of, it's a, mm, a mushroom, a mushroomy deliciousness without any bitterness. So you're not, you know, if, a, if you taste something that tastes bitter, you definitely do not have oyster mushrooms. Um, and I think that that is everything about the oyster mushroom at this moment. May it empower you to go out into the woodlands and hunt for some oyster mushrooms. And if you've enjoyed this and you'd like more, check out my online course, Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you next time. And now it's time to gather these babies for the kitchen, for me, for the family. These are gorgeous deliciousness. Thank you very much. Beautiful.